Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We have a busy, busy afternoon. It is, well, it's already four o'clock almost, and I have a ton of things I wanna get done. We're gonna be planting ginger, which is something I've never done before. We're gonna be starting sweet potato slips. We're gonna start all of our flowers and herbs seeds today. We also have some kitchen stuff. I have some turkey, excuse me, I have some chicken broth here that's been going for hours and hours and hours and hours. I bought myself an electric pressure canner, so I wanna experiment with that. So we're gonna do some canning today. I have some no need whole wheat bread that we're gonna to cook today. I started this this morning and I've never made my no need bread recipe with whole wheat flour, so we're gonna experiment with that and see how that goes. And then I have some tomato seedlings that are looking a little bit sad. They're kind of like, they're fallen over and I'm not sure why, so I really wanna get them potted up and I wanna bury them nice and deep so that they can start with a strong foundation. The plant themselves looks really good. They're not like leggy or anything like that, but they're just really like toppled over. I have had fans on them and they have been watered and fertilized and you can kind of see they're kind of floppy versus my pepper plants. They look really nice and strong and sturdy. Same with these ones down here. They're just kind of bent over. And so we're gonna see if we can get them looking a little bit better today. We have a busy, busy afternoon. Tomorrow I'm doing a ton of freezer meals. So I want to try to get this. Oh, I also have some black beans going for tomorrow for the freezer meals. So I gotta get that eventually packaged up and put in the refrigerator. I wanna get all these projects done, this kitchen clean, so I can wake up to a clean kitchen and we can start those freezer meals with a clean kitchen. So the first thing I wanna do, because I wanna just knock them out and get them done quickly, are let's get the ginger and the sweet potatoes going so that we can check two things off the list. To start our sweet potato slips, I have a nine by nine baking dish and some wide mouth mason jars. And we are gonna get our sweet potatoes started in these mason jars. I have here four organic sweet potatoes and I just bought them at the grocery store. I'm gonna take a few toothpicks and I'm going to put a few toothpicks around the sweet potato. And I'm gonna take that and put that in some water, just like that. I did not have the best of luck growing sweet potato slips last year. And I did some more reading on it and sweet potatoes really love warmth. So what I'm gonna do is put these on my heating mats instead of just like this. That's why I put them in this little baking dish so that I can set that whole thing on the heat mat and hopefully I can get the potato to be warmer so that it grows sweet potato slips a little bit faster for me. If I have to buy some sweet potato slips as well, then we will go ahead and do that. But you know, I would really like to be able to grow my own sweet potato slips. So just three or four toothpicks in the mason jar it goes. One of the main reasons I'm putting these sweet potato slips in this nine by 13 is every few days you want to change the water and it'll be easier for me to carry all of these over here in this as opposed to having to carry all of them as opposed to having to carry them one by one because these are gonna be on my heat mat in my other room. I'm gonna put my sweet potatoes on my heat mat and I'm gonna have my sweet potatoes live here until they start growing sprouts. Once they start growing sprouts, then I will go ahead and put them underneath my grow lights. I went ahead and took out a folding table and I'm gonna have a heat mat seed germination station here. Because my heat mats are so big, they just did not fit on my shelves very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm checking these seedlings every single day. As soon as I see a sprout, I'll just put it under the grow lights. I wanted my seedlings underneath these grow lights immediately once they germinated, but now that I'm starting to collect more and more trays, I just don't have the space for my heat mats to be under my grow lights. So we're gonna separate it. We're gonna have a seed germination station and I can go get one more of these tables if I need to because I have one more heat mat, but we'll just see how far we get today. We got one thing done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant our ginger, but we gotta prepare our pots for our ginger. I'm gonna grow this ginger in pots. I have some old hanging baskets. Every year a realtor gives us hanging baskets as a spring gift. And I thought that these would be a great way to plant our ginger. 
from the research I read, ginger is a heat loving plant and it doesn't need a very deep pot and I have to start these plants indoors and I need them on my heat mat. I wanna to try to reuse the soil in this pot so we're not only gonna to try to reuse this pot but we're gonna to try to reuse the soil but we do need to add some more nutrients to it. From what I've researched, ginger is a very heavy feeder. And so let me show you how we're not only gonna recycle these hanging basket pots, but how we're gonna recycle this soil. I'm gonna mix that soil from the hanging pot with some compost to re vitalize the soil. We're gonna add some nutrients back to it. I don't know if you can see the difference between, this is the brown soil that was in that pot and the compost is black almost. I have four pots that we're gonna do this to but we're ready to go ahead and fill our first pot back up. So it's gonna be a 50% compost, 50% soil that was in here from before. So ginger is what is called a rhizome and it creeps out this way. It doesn't, creep, it doesn't grow really deep. So you don't need a big pot. So that's why I thought that these hanging baskets would work really well for it. I don't know. This is a total experiment. I'm really excited to try this and figure it out with you to see how well this experiment works because to grow our own ginger and then when we harvest it, we'll freeze dry it or we'll dehydrate it, one of the two, and we'll turn it into ginger powder. Okay, so one's done, three to go. This one doesn't have as good of a soil looking to it. You know, I think this one, I think this we're gonna go put in one of the raised beds because this, I don't like the look of this one as much. It doesn't look as much like potting soil. I don't want it to go to waste, so I want it to go into a raised bed or something. So I'll be right back and I'll go throw that in one of the raised beds. But before I do that, let's see what this one looks like in case I have to take another one to the raised bed. The soil that came in these green pots had a lot of this vermiculite. It's a lot fluffier and airy as opposed to what was in these brown pots. This is really, it's almost more like dirt. And I'm gonna put this in the raised bed and I'm gonna reuse this along with the compost because I think this is gonna be a better medium and healthier medium for our ginger to grow along with the compost that we're gonna add. This is ginger that I bought at Azure. And some of the pieces, these bottom pieces, are ones that I went through and I cut them into smaller pieces because I thought that's what you were supposed to do. But I just rewatched a couple videos on YouTube about how to plant ginger. And you don't have to cut them up into small pieces. So what I think I'm gonna do, in the green pots, I'm gonna put the pieces that I cut. And in the orange pots, we're gonna put the big pieces. The new ginger growth is gonna grow from what are called the nodes, which are these right here. These little kind of like notches, these little eyes where you can see it kind of poking out just a little bit. And that's where the new plant growth is gonna come from. There's a really good example right here of it. It's starting to grow even. These three little spots right here are nodes that are gonna start growing or eyes. You can kind of think of them like the eyes of a potato. It's basically the same kind of concept, I think. I kind of have to decide which pieces I want to plant because I have a lot more ginger than areas to plant.
So I went through and I tried to pick the ones with the most nodes that I could find on them that were starting to sprout. And to plant these, you don't have to plant them very deep, just about two or three inches below the soil. And that's it. We got our ginger done. I just washed my hands really well because we're gonna go ahead and get the bread in the oven and we're gonna start canning up a few of our chicken broth. But our ginger is now planted. All it has to do is be put on the heat mat. So let's get some bread going and let's get the first round of our canner going so that we can have that going while we plant all the flowers and herbs. Look at this beauty. I just unpackaged it. Now I get the boring part of having to read the manual and figure out how to use this thing. <laughs> I will do a tutorial on it once I figure it out, but for tonight I'm testing it out and I cannot wait to use this. This is the Presto electric pressure canner. It's the only or the first, I don't know, it is FDA approved to be an electric pressure canner. It holds a maximum of five quarts, so two less quarts than your Presto canner, the one that I have that goes on the stove. But I thought that this would allow me to can a lot more because I can just put it on, walk away. I don't have to watch the dial. I don't have to listen for it or anything. I can just set it and forget it, which is, you know, what I need in my life. I'm busy and sometimes I don't pressure can as much as I would because I don't want to babysit it. So you can use this as a pressure canner or you can use it as a pressure cooker. It's huge. I don't know how often I'd use it as a pressure cooker. You can see the difference. For size comparison, this is my regular Instapot and this is my pressure canner. So let's get this thing filled and let's get this thing canning. A little bit of trivia about me is I'm extremely, extremely dyslexic. Reading this manual here is painful for me and it's one of my least favorite things to do. I have a very difficult time absorbing information via black letters on a white piece of paper. That is one reason why I've been drawn so much to YouTube because I can learn through visual and auditory. I used to be kind of embarrassed because I couldn't fully read until I was in high school, but now I've just learned it's part of my story and part of who I am and I'm totally okay with that. We all have our strengths and so if you know anyone can pick up anything from my videos, I hope that you know that's encouraging to them that you know, we can all overcome some what seems to be pretty difficult things or embarrassing things, quite honestly. And we can learn and grow and we can share our hobbies and our passions with others. And I love it. So I've read this manual probably five or six times. I'm reading it again here because it's just taking me a lot to absorb that information. So I'm excited to finally do a tutorial on this pressure canner because I can tell you I've used it four times since I got it and I've done way more canning because of it. And I'm super excited about it. If you want to know how to make your own bone broth and learn how to pressure can it with just a regular pressure canner, I do have a full tutorial already out on that and I can link that down in the description box for you. I am going to be using some new lids today and I absolutely love them. I had been recommended them from some of some friends and so I wanted to give them a try and every single one of them sealed super happy with them. I do have a discount code for these lids and if you want them right now is a fantastic time to go ahead and get stocking up on your canning supplies. I do can a little bit throughout the year but I do most of my canning in the summer and fall and I like to stock up and make sure I have all my canning supplies not just lids but jars and vinegar and sugar before harvest season starts so that I'm not scrambling when it comes to harvest season. You know, I want to, if a crop comes in, I want to be able to go ahead and set the time aside to do the canning that I need to, and I don't have to worry about having supplies. So if you're interested in these canning lens, I will link them down in the description box. We have the canner going for the first time. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I've been looking at this canner for over a year now. It was out of stock for a long time, and it is an investment, so I kind of had to budget for it but I think that it will be something that I will use a lot if I really like it so we'll see together I am gonna go ahead and strain the rest of this chicken broth while I'm at it just to clear this counter space we need a lot of chicken broth for tomorrow 
since I am going to be in the kitchen and I'm going to be able to watch my pressure canner, I'm going to go ahead and do a load of broth in the pressure canner because I have enough broth for tomorrow's cooking adventures and that I can fill a pressure canner load. So since we're in here and I'm not sure how my new pressure canner is going to go, let's go ahead and get this one going too. Out of that one roaster pan, which I had cooked four chickens in earlier, we got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten quarts that we're going to can. And then we got two, three and a half quarts that I'm going to use tomorrow in tomorrow's cooking. There we go. This is a Presto 23 quart pressure canner, which you can put on a glass stovetop. And that's what I have. You cannot put an all American canner on a glass stovetop because they're way too heavy and they can break your stove. We're gonna put our bread in our Dutch oven. This is an experiment. We used whole wheat flour with this for the first time. So we're gonna see how it goes. Trying to use up that whole wheat flour that I have. We are just checking things off the list. We have our canner going here. This is still in the warming stage. I, I'm still, I've read through these directions probably 12 times. This is not my strength, reading manuals and learning new technical things. And with something as important as canning, you have to follow the directions. So we've got that going. And now we have our other canner going. We got the rest of the broth strained out so that we can have broth for tomorrow for cooking. Let's go ahead and let's start seeding the flowers. We've got, oh, we're gonna do also some Swiss chard. We're gonna do poppies. We're gonna do two types of parsley. We've got an Italian flat leaf parsley and a triple curl parsley. I'm gonna go ahead and plant the chervil today. These are just some of the flowers. We've got cosmos, snapdragons, and I just watched a video on how to do this, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. We have borage. This is a flower pack that I got from Dollar Tree we're gonna try. We're gonna plant our Copenhagen cabbage. I got this at Azure. I'm gonna start some more asparagus. And then we have a ton more in here, which we'll get to once we get all of them out. We've got just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think seven or eight more varieties, but we have multiple colors in here of different varieties we're gonna do. I watched one of Roots and Refuge Reels and she talked about how when she starts her seeds, she doesn't necessarily go out and buy seed starting mix. That's what this is. This is the pro mix. This is what I use to start our tomatoes and peppers. She uses a good quality potting mix. So since I'm gonna be starting another round of seeds, I'm gonna try well, I've got some Pro Mix in our bin. This is just leftover Pro Mix from before. I put in maybe an eighth of the rest of that bag of compost in here. And then I'm gonna do the rest with the seed starting mix. And we're gonna see if the plants look any healthier and we're just gonna try something new. Why not? I am not an expert gardener, so let's, let's experiment and see if this does better. And if it does better for me, then maybe this is what we do moving forward. I don't know. So just looking in this bag, this potting mix is really light and fluffy. And that's one of the main components you want when you are starting seeds so that there's no big chunks inhibiting the seed germination. So I think this is gonna work well. I mean, if, if Jess from Roots and Refuge says it's good, then I trust her. So we're gonna try that. Maybe one day we'll be doing this outside. That's my dream, is to not have to do this in my kitchen, but I'm happy to do it in my kitchen in the meantime. Our pressure canner is venting, so we're gonna vent that for 10 minutes, and then we'll put the weight on it, and then we'll start the counting time once it reaches pressure, and then this went to the next stage, so now it is heating up, and then it's gonna start venting out of here as well. So they both have a venting mechanism. I'm gonna do the same thing I did when we started the tomatoes and peppers where we're gonna get this nice and damp before we fill our trays up, right here. 
Because we're using some other things other than seed starting mix, there's going to be little pieces of wood and debris because these are fine in a garden, but you don't want these in seed starting mixes. So if you see that, I'm just going to take those out. My tomatoes that I'm going to pot up, I'm going to put in these four inch pots and these pots. These are all pots that I have recycled from store bought starts. So I'm going to fill these as well. I have everything filled. It's a little bit loud in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make labels for everything. And then we will start going through all the seeds that we're going to be doing. And you can see exactly, oh, that's our bread. I think the bread, let's see. Oh, look at that. It smells good. Oh, wow, that smells fantastic. I think, I think we're gonna call it. So I'm gonna take that out. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. There we go. Beautiful. So I'll tell you what we're gonna have for dinner in a little bit with that. So back to the dirty side of the kitchen. I've got the clean side and the dirty side. Let's go ahead and get all these labeled up. And then we have to go through here and decide all of these flowers that we want to plant as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take a few minutes to up pot these tomato plants. I did research on why my tomato plants are falling over and I couldn't really find a reason for it. So I'm excited to get these up potted to see if we can kind of help them along. I have my four inch trays and my six cell trays. And all I'm gonna do is take a fork and use that fork to kind of push the tomato plant out of its cell. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to break the soil apart a little bit. And then I'm gonna plant the plant all the way to the first set of leaves. Tomato plants are really fuzzy on their stem. And each one of those little fuzzies has the potential to turn into a root. So it's totally okay to really, really bury your tomato plant. I have two to choose from. I'm gonna choose this nice big one. And unfortunately this one is gonna to have to see a better day. My tomato plants are looking so much better as I am up potting them. And what that's doing is it's giving me this tray that I'm gonna be able to plant some of our flowers in. I am kind of playing a little bit of musical chairs with the equipment that I have or the seed starting stuff that I have because I only have so much of it and I'm starting so many seeds. So by potting these up, it's gonna give me more trays. Can you see how bent that plant is? That plant is sticking, like I'm holding it straight up from the root. What I'm doing is I'm taking this plant and I'm planting it all the way up until it's leaves. I'm burying the entire stem. That way it will stick straight up. This is the Paul Robeson tomato. It's looking really healthy, except for the fact that it's kind of bent over like that. My pressure canner on the stove was making some noise, so I just took some time to go ahead and up pot all the tomatoes and figure out where I'm going to plant all my flowers in which trays. I'm starting to run a little bit out of trays, and that is one thing I've noticed with the pressure canner on the stove is it is kind of noisy, and so far the electric pressure canner doesn't make any noise really at all. So that is one thing to note between the stovetop pressure canner and the electric one. All right. I know where all the seeds are going except for the zinnias. Let me show you what I've done here. I've taken all my tomato plants and it pains me, but these are ones that, you know, had to bite the dust. I didn't have a spot for every single one of them, but I took most of them and I up potted them into these cells. So if there's only one marker in the cell, that means all six of these plants are the same plant. I tried to bury them all the way down until their first set of leaves. 
I'm gonna water them in really good, and hopefully this is gonna make for a stronger, healthier plant. So now we have two complete trays of tomatoes. So both of these are all tomatoes. And then over here, I haven't put any in these ones yet. I probably could have put more tomatoes in them, but I think I had enough because I still have these tomatoes here. These are beef steaks. I did the most beef steaks because they definitely had the strongest, healthiest roots. And we grew really good beef steaks last year. These are the peppers. I'm not quite ready to up pop my peppers, my ground cherries, and these right here are my tomatillos. But in this spot where I had some tomatoes, I had tomatoes down these two cells. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plant my poppies in one row and my snapdragons in another row because poppies and snapdragons do not need a very warm temperature. They don't need, they, I think it said, this one says soil temperature 65 to 75 degrees, which that is my house. And so we can get them to germinate without having to be on the heat mats because these trays already have my peppers. They're gonna be under the grow lights. They're not gonna be under the heat mats. So I'm gonna to try to maximize my space under the grow lights. Instead of leaving these two rows empty because I took the tomatoes out, we are gonna go ahead and get some other things planted in them. And I don't have to put the whole thing on a heat mat or not have it under the light. On this tray, we're gonna have our parsley, our borage, our Copenhagen cabbage, our Swiss chard, and our five different varieties of nasturtiums. We have our dwarf jewel nasturtium. I'm gonna plant this in our green stock. We have our cherry rose jewel nasturtium. We have our tip top rose Alaska red shade, and this one I planted last year and was absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna do with each of these each one of these varieties is gonna get one whole column. In this tray, we have a bunch of flowers. I'm gonna do the same thing where each column is getting one variety of flower. The first two we're gonna plant, we have an orange sherbet carnation, a white carnation, two different varieties of dandelion, if you can believe it. We've got a pink dandelion and a white dandelion. We have two varieties of coneflower or echinacea. Look how beautiful this is. This is a double click echinacea, and this one is a green twister echinacea. These are perennials, so they'll come back year after year. I think I'm gonna end up planting these in pots. Over here, we have two varieties of Rebecca. I've never grown Rebecca before. We have cherry brandy and Cherokee sunset. I'm gonna plant a few more of these dwarf zinnias. That's a mix from Haas and Cosmos. I bought these last year and never planted them. I have grown Echinacea. I planted the purple traditional Echinacea last year and it grew but it never bloomed. So I'm really hoping that it blooms this year. And the last tray that I actually have already seeded is the basil tray. We're gonna have an entire tray of basil. We're gonna do lemon basil and each one of these has two columns each because we love basil around here. So we have lemon basil, sweet basil, purple dark basil, Thai sweet basil, which I love this basil so good, and one that I've never grown before, Thai holy, I don't know how to say that, but this is a new basil to me. I think this was a gift. I think this was a gift to me. I've never grown this, so I'm excited about this. Both the poppies and snapdragons, I'm gonna just sprinkle on the top because they're so itty bitty. Yeah, they're so small. I'm just gonna sprinkle them. The only thing I'm gonna do to cover both of those because they're so small is I'm gonna take a little bit of my vermiculite and I'm just gonna sprinkle that because they're so itty bitty. And then we'll just water those in really well. So we have this samurai sword knife because our bread knife is in the dishwasher and Josh is gonna cut into the whole wheat bread and we're gonna see what it looks like. He's he's not so sure about showing this bread cutting technique. Our bread knife was used to open boxes. If, yeah. So it's a thing. I may have been the one that did that. So this is... It could probably be cooked a little bit more. Touch it. Is it cooked all the way through? I think it's good. Oh, okay. Definitely a little bit denser because it's whole wheat instead of white. The whole wheat bread, delicious. Josh is having some chicken salad for dinner that I made the other day. I'm gonna get these watered in here. 
This is the basil. These I'm using the humidity domes as a tray because I've run out of the trays. I ordered 10 more of the really nice seed trays that I was talking about when we started all the tomatoes and peppers, but I didn't realize I ordered the wrong ones. I ordered ones with holes in the bottom, which defeats the purpose of what I need them for. So I have to return those ones and I just reordered the correct ones. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna use what I have and I have these humidity domes. I don't put humidity domes over mine. I know that's really common, but I struggle with algae over all. And instead of just putting a humidity dome, I just water them every day with a little mister to make sure that the seeds don't dry out. And that way I don't have as many um, algae issues or mold issues. I was reading that that is one way to help prevent algae growth is not to use the humidity domes. So I figured I'll just be, you know, vigilant on watering them and making sure that the seeds don't dry out during germination. I think nasturtium seeds are the coolest seeds. They're really big and round. I just dropped one. And nasturtium leaves are the cutest little leaves you will ever have seen. And when they sprout, they're the cutest sprouts you'll ever have seen. I love them. The cinnamon trick seems to be helping with the algae. So I'm gonna do the same thing because it's working for me. I'm gonna take my vermiculite and I'm gonna put that on top as well. Back under the grow lights they go. And then I'm gonna bring you over there and I'm gonna show you what everything looks like. So it's looking a lot different over there. I just was over there and I forgot. I thought we had potted up all of our tomatoes. We have not potted up all of our tomatoes. We still have all of the cherry tomatoes and our micro tomatoes that we're gonna be growing in pots together over here still. So that's what I'm gonna put over on these big four by four trays, but I don't have the energy to do that tonight. So I'll do that a different night. So let's show you what we got here. Can you believe our onions? They are just incredible. This is the one we just did with just some tomatoes over here. We've got our cabbage. Our celery just started sprouting a couple days ago. You can see there is a little bit of algae growth on some of these, but not as bad as it even was last year. See, there's a little bit right there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit more cinnamon on this. And these are our cabbages. They're looking really good. These are our tomatoes, our micro tomatoes and our cherry tomatoes. So these are the ones that I forgot about, but I'll do these probably in the next couple days. And down here we have our leeks, more onions. Oh no, these are our shallots and then our other leeks. So our King Richard leeks are a little bit sadder looking than our American flag leeks. I have two fans down here. I have one right here and one over here that faces the seedlings. They're just off right now because they're loud. Down here we have our peppers that are for our container garden peppers and they're looking really good. We've got over here, this is our kales, our cauliflower, our broccoli, and that looks pretty good. Our scarlet kale didn't, hasn't produced that well so far. Up here, these are our nasturtiums. We have more kale more peppers, and our tomatoes that I just up potted. Our tomatoes I just up potted, and then these are more of our peppers. Some of these have just started sprouting the last day or two. These are our Craig's Grande Jalapenos. Our pepperoncinis, none of them have sprouted yet, but all of the other ones, at least some, except for these poblanos haven't sprouted at all yet. So overall, they're looking really good. While I was planting, my husband went ahead and got me out another table and he got my heat mats all set up and ready to go. They should be nice and warm. And I got the thermometer in the mail so I can regulate the temperature of this heat mat depending on what I'm growing and how warm I want it. It's really nice that this heat mat has it right on here so I don't have to remember it, I can just look on it. So let's get these tables 
filled up. The one thing that I did not get to tonight are my zinnias. I have about eight or nine or ten different varieties of zinnias we're going to be planting. But I, it's eight o'clock. Oh, it's nine o'clock. <laughs> and if I stay up any later to do this, then I am not going to have the energy to do the freezer meals tomorrow. And trust me, I need freezer meals. I don't have any zero zip zilch freezer meals in my freezer right now. And that is just not how I like to live my life. So I need to make sure, I've already prepped a ton of stuff for the freezer meal, so I need to make sure that I do that tomorrow. And I still need to clean this kitchen. This kitchen is not in a state where I can do a bunch of cooking. You know, we need to take care of the potting mix, clean up, sweep and mop. We need to clean the counters and just get it ready for tomorrow. When I cook in the kitchen, I really prefer it to be nice and clean and ready for me, but my new pressure canner says that it's done. So let's go take a look at that. I am so excited about this. The reason I'm so excited is because I don't have to watch the gauge. Let's see if this goes up. The reason I was able to use my other pressure canner is because I was sitting here and I could watch it to make sure it stayed at pressure. None of the glass jars broke. I had my tongs out earlier and I can't find my jar tongs, so I'm going to use this. I can link it down in the description box if you're interested in this electric pressure cooker or canner. It's a pressure cooker too, it's both, but this is a huge pressure cooker. You could cook probably two chickens in here if you wanted to. It's huge. So I'm going to turn it off. The one thing that I did notice about that electric pressure canner is that it's a Teflon insert. So the Instapot pressure canner the insert is stainless steel, and I don't cook with Teflon. I don't have anything that's non-stick except for my cast iron. So if I don't do any cooking in that electric pressure canner slash cooker, then it's not that big of a deal. But I kind of wish that the insert was stainless steel. So that is something to consider if you plan to cook with it a lot. My plan for it is to can with it a lot. That was a busy day. That was a really, really busy day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today as we canned, planted, up potted, did all the things. Wow, I wasn't really expecting to get all that done. I still need to plant my zinnias, but I'm not gonna do that tonight. I'll probably take, today is Thursday. I'll probably, no, today's Wednesday. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking the next, I'm gonna give myself a half an hour I'm going to get this place cleaned. It needs to be clean. I can't stand doing large cooking days when my kitchen is a disaster. If you're interested in any of the canning equipment, seed companies I order from, seed equipment, the canner I just got, I'll link everything down in the description box so you can check it out if you're interested. Thanks again for hanging out with me, friends. I understand that time is the most precious resource and the fact that we get to hang out together and spend time together is just such an honor and it's humbling that you take time out of your day to spend time with me so i really appreciate it if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up i greatly appreciate it if you want to watch more of my canning videos if you're new to canning and you're like what is this canning thing about i'll leave some canning tutorial videos up there you can go watch those if you want to know what my garden looked like last year i can put a garden video down here if you want to see me cook a bunch of freezer meals then i'll put a freezer meal playlist up here you can go watch those Thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please consider subscribing. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, and I cannot wait to see you guys next time. Bye, guys.